So I have a very modest goal for today, and it's to complete the discussion of Feynman diagrams. Uh, so basically, the moment this is done, I'll quit. And that might mean a, a, a relatively short class today. Uh, and then we will move on and use it, but, or, or not use it because that was an aside, but we will move on back to not theory. But, so again, I remind you that we had wishes from quantum field theory to compute perturbed Gaussian integration. And the reason was that, well, this is the finite dimensional analog of path integrals that you see, say, in quantum electrodynamics. And in fact, the techniques that we will derive are exactly the same techniques that are used when you work with quantum electrodynamics, only that with quantum electrodynamics, things get more complicated. But initially, that's it. OK? Anyway, uh, what we have derived so far is the following. So if you want to compute the integral on r to the n of a polynomial in x times the exponential of a quadratic form, uh, so uh, then, uh, so, sorry, so let, let me remind you the definitions. So lambda ij is a symmetric matrix. It better be positive de definite for this integral to be convergent. But in fact, convergent is not sort of, we compute things algebraically. And, uh, uh, and, and convergence is actually uh, not terribly significant because the idea is to derive formulas and then imitate and then, and then copy them to other contexts in which convergence doesn't even make sense. So convergence is not that important. The, the idea is to copy the formulas and see if they work in other contexts. Anyway, uh, so lambda ij is a symmetric, possibly positive definite matrix. Uh, we write the matrix as uppercase lambda. The inverse of lambda is also called lambda ij, but with upper indices instead of lower indices. So, you know, this means that if you multiply, so lambda ij times lambda jk, and again, there is summation over repeated indices, then this is the identity matri matrix delta ik. OK? Uh, uh, and c is the constant 2 pi to the n over 2 divided by the square root of the determinant of lambda. With all of this, we found that this integral is equal to this constant times you take p, replace every place, you, every place where you see an xi, you know, so this is a, a polynomial in all of the xi's. So every place you see an xi, you replace it by you replace it by d to dyi. You apply it to the negative inverse quadratic form in the dual variables. So you invent variables yi. Well, I already invented them. And then you look at the, du the, the, the quadratic form that has the minus replaced by a plus, and more importantly, the lambda ij replaced by the inverse lambda ij. You apply this differential operator to that, and then you substitute uh, y equals to 0. OK? So uh, before continuing to use it here, uh, let me make a cute observation. So, uh, uh, I, really, d to dy and y are, are somehow interchangeable. So, differentiation acts by each derivative picks, picks a y and, and, and eliminates it, and, and, then, and, and then they eliminate each other, sorry. And, and, and then you set the y's to zero, so, uh, so, so, it's a, so really you're looking for complete pairings between whatever d to dy's will appear here and whatever y's will appear here. But whenever you have a pairing like that, you can write it in the reverse. You can put the derivatives here and the variables here. 
okay? Uh, and in fact, we've done that. When we wrote the composition law of generating functions, I had two ways of writing it. I could replace the Greek letters by differentiations with respect to Latin letters, or the Latin letters with differentiations with respect to Greek letters, and it's the same. So, uh, this is in fact equal to e to the one-half lambda ij uh, d to d x i d to d uh, x j so now this is an infinite order differential operator and I let it act on a polynomial so the fact that it's infinite order is irrelevant because only finitely many terms will contribute and the polynomial is the, the original polynomial p of x i and then I substitute all the x i's to be zero, all the x i's to be zero. Sorry, x is not upper indices. So that's exactly, this is exactly the same. But you see, this is also what we called uh, f colon uh, p. So really the computations we were after when we were doing various differentiations, where when we were doing compositions of generating functions, we needed to compute things like that. Well, these are exactly these Gaussian, uh, uh, these are exactly the same. Okay? Uh, okay. So, uh, sorry, not f. Lambda. Sorry, f was the quadratic form. And, and here we call the quadratic form uh, lambda. So this is lambda column p. Sorry. And, and relative to the variables xi. OK. Uh, oh, sorry. And I also forgot the c. OK. So we have a capital lambda? Uh, capital lambda, yes. Uh, OK, fine. Yeah, you're right. Gee, how many mistakes can you make in one formula? Okay. Uh, right. Okay. So, oh, and, and, and even more, uh, uh, this is really, uh, again, in, 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 oh, you know what? No, let's first, let's first expand this. So, okay, now I want to compute this, and I'm assuming epsilon is small, so I'm allowing myself to expand with respect to epsilon. So this is uh, uh, the sum as uh, m is greater than or equal to zero of uh, epsilon to the m divided by m factorial Basically, I'm exp so this is the exponential of this. So I'm expanding it as a power series. So I get epsilon to the m divided by 6 to the m, divided by 6 to the m. Uh, and then uh, 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 the integral over r to the n of lambda i, j, k, x i x j x k to the power m uh, multiplying e to the minus one half uh, lambda i j x i x j dx and this is a polynomial okay uh, so we can use the techniques written over there. So this is uh, 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 C times uh, the sum as M goes from 0, well, as M is greater than or equal to 0, of uh, epsilon to the M divided by 6 to the M M factorial. Uh, lambda ijk uh, 
di, dj, dk uh, to the power m. So where, uh, since I'm lazy and I don't like writing d to dyi, I'll just uh, define that di means uh, d to dyi. Yeah? Sorry, I'm just wondering about what's the difference between lambda ij and lambda ijk? Are these so oh, this is, this is completely different. Okay. No relationship whatsoever. Right. So this is this is the coefficients of the these are the coefficients of the quadratic piece. This is these are the coefficients of the cubic piece. Uh, so I mean both are symmetric tensors, but they're just unrelated. They just chose the same name, but but you know there's no relationship between. So function overloading is happening. Yes. Okay. Okay. Name overloading. Yes. Okay. So you know maybe I should have called these mu i j k just to make them different. But since they have three indices, they are distinct from the ones that have two indices. There are no relations between them. Sorry. You're, you're okay. So anyway, uh, and this should be applied to. Uh, e to the one half um, uh, 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 lambda. Okay, so uh, he, he, here's a convention. You see, uh, I, 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 or I don't want the summation variables here to be confused with the summation variables here. So I'll just change the name. So lambda alpha beta um, uh, y alpha y beta. OK? And now let's continue. So you see, uh, this, sorry, and all of this is evaluated at all the y's uh, equal to 0. OK, now, this is again a power series. And uh, so I can write it as a sum over L, uh, 1 over uh, L factorial, 2 to the power L, that's the 1 half here, times lambda alpha beta y alpha y beta raised to the power L. OK? And then I have a double summation. So the result is a double summation as M and L are greater than or equal to 0. But you see, uh, here you're going to have three M differentiations. And here, you're going to have two L Y's. The only way M differentiations will differentiate two L Y's, sorry, three M differentiations will differentiate two L Y's and produce an output which is non-zero and remains non-zero after substituting the Y's to be zero, is if the number of Y's is equal to the number of differentiations. So the only way you'll get a contribution is if 3m is equal to 2l. And then the contribution will be, uh, oh, I forgot the c. Uh, so and then the contribution will be, um, uh, you know, maybe it's better if I'll stop copying from my formulas and just think. So uh, it will be epsilon to the m divided by 6 to the m, sorry, 6 to the m, m factorial, 2 to the l, l factorial, and then uh, uh, lambda i, j, k, d, i, d, j, d, k to the power m, and I'm writing it in a sloppy way, you see, it's sloppy, because I intend to immediately erase it. Uh, so you see, 
whenever you have a sum of uh, something, sum of uh, a, i, j, summation over i and j, okay? And this is what we have here. I mean, this is really a summation. This, here I drop the summation. This is a summation over lambda i, j, k, okay? Whenever you have a sum like that, and you raise it to the power m, uh, you can expand it and write it as a product of sums. Sorry, as a sum of products. Okay? So this is really a i j, you know, uh, so, so this is really, uh, uh, you know, I, sorry, maybe I've, I've, I've I, I try to oversimplify. Uh, so, you know what? Let me simply do it with the thing here. So, uh, this uh, lambda i j k, uh, uh, what was it? D i d j d k to the power m can be written as uh, lambda i j k d i d j d k multiplied by itself lambda uh, lambda i j k d i d j d k multiplied by itself uh, m times Okay, but uh, instead, so so the summation variables are dummy, right? The the i j k s are dummy summation variables, so it's nice to change their names to 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 identify to, to have basically to have the ones here different identity from the ones here. So basically, I'll make it i one j one k one. I2, J2, K2, up to lambda I, sorry, lambda I, M, J, M, K, M, uh, del I, M, del J, M, del K, M, okay? And uh, and the point is that now the summation, you can pull the summation outside. So this is really now a summation over M and L, but also over all possible values going from 1 to N of I1, J1, K1, I2, J2, K2, basically all of the variables that appear here. Likewise, you can do to this. So you'll have uh, lambda alpha 1, beta 1, lambda, uh, sorry, times y alpha 1, uh, beta 1, uh, yes, uh, multiplying all the way to lambda alpha L beta L y alpha L beta L. Okay. And now I just want to visualize it a little bit better. So, uh, uh, again, it's C times the same summation, so over uh, m and l greater than or equal to 0, 3m is equal to 2l, uh, epsilon to the m, 6 to the m, ah, 6 to the m, m factorial, 2 to the l, l factorial. And, and now I want to uh, visualize it. So I think of these as tridents. So each lambda i, j, k, is, uh, sorry, di, dj, dk gets replaced by a picture like this, 
uh, where you have here differentiation with respect to variable number i, here with respect to j, here with respect to k, and it comes with coefficient lambda i, j, k. And the arrow means differentiate, so I don't know, it's like the sharp end of a trident, it's called, right? The, where you stick something and punch it, whatever. And likewise, I will replace every lambda alpha beta by, uh, I don't know, differential di things to be differentiated. I don't know, where do you stick the delis? I don't know, the, where do you stick the knives in a trident? Okay, so, so it will be, uh, so, so basically this stands for, uh, 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 so, so lambda alpha beta y alpha y beta will be replaced by this picture and really differentiations means you connect one of, uh, you connect one of those pointy edges into one of those soft spot spots and you sum or sum over all possible connections like that. Okay, because each derivative can apply can be acting on on each variable. However, the moment this differentiates that, so this is really di acting on y beta. Di acting on y beta is delta i beta. So this really stands for delta i beta. Okay? You, you get the non-zero answer only if i is equal to beta. So now let's do it in grander scale. So we have uh, L uh, to be differentiated things at the top. So we have L of them. Each one is a lambda alpha beta y alpha beta. So each one comes with a coefficient. But the first one comes with alpha 1 beta 1. The second one with alpha 2 beta 2. And the coefficients are alpha 2 beta 2. Until the last one comes with lambda uh, alpha, sorry, it's upper alpha beta. Uh, lambda alpha 1 beta 1, lambda alpha 2 beta 2, up to lambda alpha L beta L, and here these are labeled alpha L and beta L. And uh, you, we have differentiation tridents down below, uh, and there are M of them, so that the number of pointy things pointing up and the number of soft things pointing down, killable things pointing down, is equal. And here we have lambda i1, j1, k1, up to lambda i, m, j, m, k, m. And each of these is labeled i1, j1, k1 up to i1, uh, sorry, i m, j m, k m. And there is a summation here over all pairings, right? So each differentiation must act on one, one variable. So there is here summation over uh, pairings and Whenever you pair, you identify the two variables. You make them equal. So if k1 gets paired with beta 2, they have to be equal. You set them equal. OK? Uh, good. Uh, but what does a pairing look like? So once you pair, uh, I don't know, let's say you have uh, two tridents, so let's do the case where m is equal to 2 and l is equal to 3. So if you have two tridents and three 
uh, soft things, then uh, a pairing is some connection like this. Okay? But this is a graph. But in fact, it's a graph which is fully labeled. So the labeling of such a graph is, well, every vertex has a number. This is vertex number one, this is vertex number two. The edges of the graph really start from a vertex and end again in a vertex, but they are labeled by the which copy of lambda they come from. So these are also labeled one, two, three. And furthermore, uh, each, you know, if I indicate a, a red point uh, like, uh, like at the end of each trident, I don't know, you can think of it in bloody terms, that's where the trident punctured the, the, the soft thing, then uh, uh, you have an I label, and it's either I, I or J or K, so below each red thing you have either an I or a J or a K with a subscript, and above it you have either an alpha or a beta, again with a subscript. So I can replace any such thing by a, a, a simple trivalent graph keeping the same labeling. So it's a trivalent graph whose vertices are labeled one and two, uh, so, or, and whose uh, uh, edges are labeled one, two, three in some order. Uh, and that's not the only example, I mean, look for example, in fact, this graph looks more like that one. And again, the vertices are labeled 1 and 2. The edges are labeled 1, 2, and 3. And uh, there are red dots uh, around the vertices. And wherever you have a red dot, uh, then uh, to its, uh, in the side corresponding to the vertex, there is either an I1 or a J1 or a K1, or, uh, or on the other side it would be J2, K2, I2, say. Uh, and on the side towards the edge, you will have either an alpha one or a beta one. And on edge number two, you'll have either, well, you'll have a beta two and an alpha one, and so on. And, you know, maybe I should have used the, the right uh, labeling. And this corresponds to a certain way of, of connecting the uh, tridents with the soft things. Yes? Um, although in your picture, like edge number two, the two sides of edge number two should be labeled with uh, corresponding variables, like a beta two and an alpha two, or beta one and alpha three. Right? Correct. Okay. And this should be, again, beta three and alpha three. So in fact, I can read a trident picture out of this, right? This means two, tri two trident, three edges. Uh, let's see. Uh, I1 connects with alpha 1. So I1 connects with alpha 1. J1 connects with beta 2. So this is J1. Beta 2 is the second uh, leg of, so this is beta 2. Uh, K1 connects with beta 3. So this is K1, and it connects with beta 3. Uh, uh, and so on. Okay? Uh, so. J2 connects with beta 1. J2 is this J, the second J, and it connects with the first beta. Uh, K1 
is connect with, connected with alpha 2. So K2 is connected with this, and, and I2 is connected with alpha 3. So I2 is connected with alpha 3. So, and this is the graph in a messy form, and this is the graph written in a more elegant form. Okay? So anyway, this summation becomes uh, C times the sum, well, unfortunately, I have to copy this. 3n is equal to, you know what? No, I don't. No, I don't. Uh, uh, so let me include this summation into the graph. You see, out of the graph, you can read what is M and what is L? M is the number of vertices and L is the number of edges. Okay? So this is really a summation over trivalent, uh, fully labeled. Uh, so fully labeled means labeled according to these rules. Uh, So-called di well, diagrams D. For each such diagram, you compute epsilon to the power, the number of vertices. So M is the number of vertices. L is the uh, number of edges. And then you look at epsilon to the M divided by 6 to the M, M factorial, uh, 2 to the L, L factorial. And then you get the formula. And the formula is determined by the graph. And what is the formula? So uh, what's the formula corresponding to a graph? Basically, for each vertex, you take a lambda i, j, k, right? And so you get lambda i1, j1, uh, K1 for each, sorry, and then lambda I2, J2, K2. And for each edge, you're supposed to take an upper lambda, so a, a, a lambda alpha beta. Uh, and you take it, so for the first edge, you get lambda alpha 1, beta 1. So you'll be getting lambda alpha 1, beta 1 except alpha 1 is equal to i1, and beta 1 is equal to, to j2. So you can ignore the, 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 alpha, bet, the alpha beta marking and simply write it as lambda i1 j2, lambda j1 k2, j1 k2, lambda uh, K1 I2 with the labeling that I wrote. Let me call this thing the expression corresponding to the graph D. Yes? Uh, although the last two terms aren't the alphas and betas split. Sorry? The alphas oh, and oh, oh, you are right. Sorry. Uh, it's really the first index is the alpha and the second index is the beta. But remember that this is a symmetric matrix. So if you flip the two indices, it just doesn't matter. So by chance, I was, I, I was saved. OK? So for each diagram, I have the expression corresponding to the diagram. And again, the rules for how to read the expression are written here. Maybe I'll do another example. So how do you read the expression corresponding to this graph? OK? So the expression corresponding to this graph, well, it doesn't even make sense, what I said. Because this isn't a labeled graph. So first label it. So i1, j1, k1, i2, do it symmetrically. I2, uh, J2, K2, 
and then the expression corresponding to it will be lambda i1, j1, k1, lambda i2, j2, k2, upper lambda i1, j1, i1, j1, upper lambda uh, k1, k2, and upper lambda j2, i2 or maybe i to j2, it doesn't matter. And of course there is a summation here over all the, over all the variables. i1 up to k2. And all of these run from 1 to n. Okay? So this expression depends on the labeling. The formula depends on the labeling. However, the value of the formula does not depend on the labeling. It depends only on the graph. Because all of these variables are dummy variables. They're all summed over. I could rename them as I please. So this expression depends on the formula. Sorry, the, the, the formula depends on the labeling and I have to sum over all possible labelings, but the value is independent of the labeling. So I can replace this by an, a better formula. I can write it as the C times the sum over trivalent, but unlabeled uh, graphs, Diagrams, you know, now let's give them names. They're called Feynman diagrams. And uh, for each such diagram, you get epsilon to the m divided by 6 to the m, m factorial, 2 to the l, l factorial. And then uh, the number of labelings of D. So for each diagram, you have to count how many times it can be labeled. And then for each such labeling, you, uh, sorry, and then, for, uh, and then you pick one labeling, it doesn't matter which, and compute the expression corresponding to D. Okay? So, uh, claim, oi, oi, shouldn't have erased it. Okay, too late. Anyway, uh, claim, so the number of labelings of a diagram D is equal to, so basically, uh, so I don't know, here is a trivalent graph. I have to choose uh, how to order the vertices. So it's going to be uh, 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 the number of vertices, so m factorial. Then I have to choose uh, how to order the edges, 1, 2, 3, so that's l factorial. Then uh, in each vertex, uh, there are three edges coming out of it, and they should be labeled with i, j, and k in some arbitrary order. So, so basically, I have to choose a permutation of i, j, and k. So this is 6 to the m. And each edge has an alpha on one side and a beta on the other side, and there are two ways you can do it. So that's 2 to the l. But that's actually not quite right. Because different labelings may correspond to the same, sorry. Different labelings or different choices like this, different choices of labels may correspond to the same labeled graph. 
Let me give you an example. So, uh, 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 if you label this uh, uh, well, one, okay, one, two, three, one, two, and let's ignore the right hand sides or something, I don't care. But here you'll put I1, J1, and necessarily K1, and here you'll put alpha 1 and beta 1. That's the same as turning it over uh, and giving and getting, again, I don't care about the right hand side, but on the left hand side, writing it as K1. Uh, uh, I1, J1, alpha 1, beta 1. This represents the same pairing, right? It's still the pairing where I1 is paired with alpha 1, I1 is paired with I alpha 1, and J1 is paired with beta 1. So flipping, flipping this little loop represents the same pairing. So here I overcounted, and the amount by which I uh, overcounted, and I'll keep it as an exercise because it's taking me actually longer than I expected, uh, but the amount by which I over carry, I overcounted, and this is exactly this, uh, I mean, you, you saw that the automorphism of the graph corresponded to an overcounting. So the amount is the order of the automorphism group of D. So uh, just in the two examples that we care about, here the order of automorphism group is uh, so I can flip this, I can flip this, and I can flip left to right. So and I can do them independently. So this is eight, and the order of the automorphism group of the other graph we studied. So this one is. So here, basically, we can permute the edges in any way we want and flip left to right. So that's 12. I think. I hope I'm not messing up. Anyway, so the end result is, uh, OK, let's erase this. Let's erase this. So this is sum over all diagrams D, all Feynman diagrams. D. For each Feynman diagram, you take E epsilon to the number of vertices. All of these cancel all of those, and you're just left with the order of the automorphism group of the diagram multiplied by the expression corresponding to diagram, which is easy to determine. Good. That's all I wanted to tell you. So, uh, uh, and we've, we've sort of, we've, we've done this. I've just made it a bit more explicit today. So it's, a, a, and again, it occurs in physics all over the place. So uh, uh, right, all computation in quantum electrodynamics have, are of this form, except this is much harder. Well, this is much harder, but otherwise it's the same. OK. So I'll see you on Friday, and uh, we'll start a new topic.